After months of laborious work, the Kinloch Bravo oil rig crew is getting ready to return home in the North Sea. Unfortunately, the company is calling Magnus, the rig manager, with bad news. They are uncertain as to when they will be able to pick up Magnus crew because the helicopters are detouring to assist the North Kilskower platform with its power outage. When Magnus tries to get more information, the phone abruptly stops working. All over the building, communication breaks down, Kat's call to her wife freezes, and Fulmer is unable to get the main radio to function either. They will have to wait a while to go home, Magnus says as he calls a meeting. Nobody likes this, especially Lars, who keeps requesting appropriate justifications. All of a sudden, the building loses power, and Fulmer finds that none of the backup generators are working. For the time being, the battery backup is keeping everything going, and the production module's pressure is holding, but if it spikes, it could kill everyone. Fulmer tries to make contact with the standby vessel, but the radio is still broken, and it also appears that the other oil platform nearby is experiencing similar issues. The entire rig starts to tremble, and the production module's fire starts to spread out of control. To save their lives, Magnus orders his men to shut down the module even though Rose, the company representative, objects because they will be far off quota. The entire rig then starts to shake once more. Everyone looks in disbelief as they realize that the entire building is shrouded in a very dense, moving fog. Fulmer eventually restores power a short while later, but communications are still down, and it is impossible for the helicopters to arrive in this weather. Alwyn questions whether they haven't drilled too deeply and set off a seismic event, but Rose, a scientist, reassures him that this isn't how it works. Fulmer and Baz are sent to inspect the radio tower by Magnus because he believes that fixing communications should be their top priority. Fulmer starts to check the machine when they reach the top, but he snaps when Baz accuses him of betraying the group by dating Rose, who is on the company's side rather than theirs. Fulmer releases Baz after he quickly apologizes, and as he moves to pick up something, he discovers a dead seagull lying on the ground. While waiting at the tower's base, Magnus and Lars unexpectedly witness Baz falling. Fulmer arrives on the scene as well, saying he doesn't know what happened because Baz had been right behind him, and Cat, Rose, and a medical kit rush to the scene. Lars is skeptical of his account because Baz's harness was left unfastened. Without a surgery room, Cat can only stabilize Bax in the medical bay. There is nothing else she can do. Since there is no chance that the choppers will arrive in time, Lars begins to lose it. Magnus is brought to the computer by Rose to demonstrate to him that the lack of pressure in the pipelines means that all the nearby drilling rigs are experiencing the same issue. Bez wakes up shortly after and starts having visions of things disintegrating beneath the sea. Lars visits Magnus' office and accuses him of being responsible for everything, but he simply ignores them and leaves. This gives Lars the opportunity to look around his desk and discover a confidential memo from the business, which infuriates him. He gathers everyone on the helideck and tells them that management has been deceiving them all along. Magnus arrives as well and notices that Lars has the memo. He then has to admit that the company is scrapping the entire field and that everyone will soon lose their jobs. Even though they are not near a volcano, something falls on them suddenly and interrupts their conversation. It is Ash. Additionally arriving at the helideck, Baz declares that It's too late, it's already started, before passing out. Later. Baz awakens in the hospital and says he has no memory of the collision or the helideck. He heard a noise in his head and noticed something in the fog at the tower. When Cat attempts to draw blood, Baz reacts violently and yells at them for disobeying his warnings that a wave is approaching. Rose is informed by Cat that Baz is healing quickly on his own after she successfully puts him to sleep. When the women have left, Baz says he is still awake and checks his wounds, finding glowing spores that are closing them. The standby vessel is trying to communicate but is also heading the wrong way when the crew notices some lights by the window in the recreation room. Lek is sent outside by Alwyn to retrieve the Morse message, and they find that the ship is pleading for assistance. Magnus goes to the cook, Merch, and asks him to begin rationing their food after giving Fulmer the order to sign back to them using the deck lights to learn what they know. Because Easter was stationed at the door and Lars was locked in his room, Lars is beginning to lose his mind. When Maz wakes up again in the hospital, he notices that most of his wounds have healed, and when he looks in the mirror, he starts to see the rig being destroyed in his dreams. He then makes his way back to his room, where, as he puts on clothes, he starts to writhe in agony as his mouth forces out his gold tooth. Rose asks everyone to remain inside as she collects some ash to analyze. 
She and Magnus are told by Fulmer that the ship doesn't know any more details than they do. They lack communications as well, so if they wait until morning, the boat may crash because they won't be able to use the lights to guide them in. Rose doesn't want to evacuate because it could land them in legal trouble for breaching the contract. But Magnus prioritizes everyone's safety and instructs Fulmer to keep the lights on so they can guide the ship slowly. Alwyn discovers Baz scribbling strange circles on a window when he goes outside to take over Lex's shift. Baz informs him that something is definitely out of the ordinary about the situation when he checks on him, saying that his head is noisy and that he shouldn't have survived the accident. Before leaving the room, Baz experiences another strange vision as the lights in the room begin to flicker. Lars begins working on the window and succeeds in removing it from the wall so that he can flee. Lek tries to take a shower after sneaking into the hospital to steal some rubbing alcohol to get drunk. Lek's body starts to hurt all over at that point, and as he vomits blood, the ink on his tattoos begins to peel off his skin. He has already passed away by the time Heather finds him. When Kat goes to check on him, she is unable to determine what caused his death. But when Dunlin arrives carrying Baz's tooth, she is certain that something is forcing inorganic material out of their bodies. Fulmer observes a light on the bridge from the control room that is not associated with the ship. He steps outside with Alwyn to investigate. But before they can catch him, Lars spots them and extinguishes his flashlight. He accidentally runs into Heather as he enters the building through the door they entered through and locks it. Fulmer accidentally cuts his hand while checking the road boats for potential escapees with Alwyn. Then, for some reason, the ash stops falling. Lars enters the control room and begins flashing the lights as an SOS signal, which prompts the ship to approach at full speed. When Alwyn and Fulmer see the message and attempt to enter again, the door is locked, so Alwyn looks for another way in while Fulmer continues to yell. Magnus joins Heather in opening the door after Heather hears him. When Fulmer tells them about Lars, they rush to stop him and nearly get into a fistfight. Magnus then tells them to focus on sending a message to the ship telling it to change course. Alwyn is currently searching for Baz after following some flickering lights that took him to the man, who says he must see the life in the water that started it all, in order to return. Baz snaps when Alwyn insists, grabbing him and forcing him to spit water out of his mouth. Baz drops Alwyn and flees as Dunlin arrives to warn them of an approaching wave brought on by the boat changing course. Magnus arrives to assist with CPR as Dunlin drags Alwyn's body out of the water, but it is already too late. Cat who arrives shortly after, confirms that Alwyn drowned. Rose keeps looking at the ash, and when she splashes some blood on it, she sees that there are indeed living things there. She visits Magnus, who informs her that the vessel left earlier to assist another rig. He and Kat are taken to Rose's office where she explains that the ash has some sort of parasitic spore that is searching for hosts, and that it quickly heals their wounds because it wants a healthy body. They need to watch out for people with open wounds and stay out of the ash for as long as possible. Magnus gives Rose permission to collect blood samples from the entire crew and compare them to the samples they received from Bass. Heather notices the fog is finally dissipating and the nearby rig has been completely destroyed while she is in the mess hall. When Fulmer discovers Baz examining Rose's research, he tries to help but Baz declines because the light requires him. When Rose arrives and discovers that Baz has taken his own blood sample, he flees rather than cooperate. When Magnus learns what transpired, he orders Kat to check on anyone who may have been hurt because they are no longer able to conduct the testing. Magnus convenes a new meeting after isolating Fulmer. He wants half of the team to thoroughly disinfect the rig now that the fog and ash are gone, while the other half is tasked with finding Baz. Rose keeps looking and learns that the spores have been observed before, fossilized in layers of the earth. They ought to have perished along with the dinosaurs, but drilling so deeply has awakened a nest. Baz is dumping his blood sample into the ocean outside. Now that his body has fully recovered, he touches the water tanks to fill them with spores as a test. He runs away when he hears James searching for him, but Baz has to silence him when James notices the spilt water and calls for assistance. James is wounded on the floor when Lars and Dunlin enter the room. Lars notices that plants have begun to emerge from the spores in the water. Heather, Easter, and Merch discover plants growing on the oil in the machinery room as well. When the rig begins to shake once more, Dunlin notices James is bleeding. The boy reveals he lost a tooth when he opens his hand, indicating that he is infected. James strikes Dunlin out of fear before escaping. Magnus removes Fulmer from isolation when the rig begins to lose power once more and forces him to fix it. 
Baz is growing plants all over the place when Heather sees him and follows him into the mud pit. According to Baz, a million-year-old memory has informed him that he must defend this location because it is under attack and if it perishes, everyone will perish along with it. James unexpectedly shows up as well because he has joined Baz's cause. Lars rescues Heather after the rest of the team notices she's gone, forcing Baz and James to flee before Heather can ask more questions. When Fulmer restores power, the team notices that the flare on the production module is no longer present. To prevent it from exploding, they must cut it off from the power supply, but the module control is in the mud pit, where they risk contracting the spores. Fulmer decides to take the chance since manually relighting the flare is their only option. Fulmer unclips his harness and gets as close to the module as he can for a good shot after Easter maneuvers the crane to try and get him closer, but it's not enough. Fulmer is hit by the fire and needs to be taken to the hospital for treatment of some serious burns on his back after the flare is successfully turned on once more. Baz's visions worsen in the mud pit, and he decides that in order to stop the attack, they must turn off the rig systems. They will access the system from the source because James tries to close the valve but the pipes are still under pressure and could blow. Fulmer later claims he feels fine and gets dressed out of a desire to assist after receiving a visit from Rose. He starts working on the research with Rose and Heather, and Fulmer unconsciously makes some circles on a piece of paper like Baz used to. Suddenly, Magnus summons everyone to the control room, where he finds that Baz is attempting to circumvent the well's safety measures and that the pressure there is extremely high. They will have to take a chance with the bull's ROV because Fulmer is unable to take control away from him remotely. Easter controls the ROV and captures images underwater that demonstrate how the earthquakes have left behind a number of circles on the landscape that are reminiscent of Fulmer's drawings. As the ROV cautiously approaches the wellhead and turns it off, Baz is incensed that his plan didn't work and is upset. He attempts to access the system directly from the CPU, but Fulmer is needed to turn off an alarm that is present. The crew learns that communications are back when Easter's phone receives a message. While Fulmer searches the meaning of the circles that appear to be communicating something, Magnus tries to get in touch with the Coast Guard. Rose looks through the company's system in search of some containers Heather discovered but no one was aware of, only to find a project called Syrian that she is unable to access. She also discovers Fulmer's sketches. Kat calls her wife who informs her that the crew has also been experiencing electrical issues and that the company has assured the families the crew is fine. The city is suddenly enveloped in fog at that precise moment, and now only those on land have access to electricity. Magnus sends messages to the guard asking for assistance, but the internet signal drops. Fulmer's body starts to heal more quickly after Baz connects with it using his spores abilities. Fulmer rushes to the bathroom to examine his wounds as he starts to hear Baz's voice in his head. Fulmer is startled when Rose notices that he's gone missing and goes to look for him because he briefly glimpses Baz in the mirror. He tells Rose everything, and she comforts him by giving him a kiss. Fulmer experiences a vision of her suffering as well as an appearance of Baz who invites him to join him. Rose checks on Fulmer again hours later and discovers a note he left behind. Kat follows Rosa as she pursues Fulmer, and the two of them catch up with him as he enters the mud pit. The spores approach Kat but do not attack. Instead, they circle her stomach in an attempt to learn more about the infant. The girls also enter the pit. Before things worsen, Rose drags Cat outside, where they discover the crew giddy with anticipation as a string of lights approaches the rig. It's a ship leaving the nearby oil rig. Coke, a member of the company's research division who demands to be taken right away to the control room, is introduced to Rose as the crew welcomes the survivors. Easter is surprised to see his ex-girlfriend Harish among the other men when Kat checks to make sure they are uninjured. Coke explains that his rig blew up due to a pressure failure and believes that they should give getting back access to the production module top priority. Rose asks Coke why he was sent to the rig, but he won't give her an answer. Harish tells Easter a different story in the hospital. When Coke got to the rig, he sent a lot of people home and the rest of them had to assist him in setting up some new machinery. They were sending something down not pulling oil up from the well. As the fog began to roll in and people began to vanish, Coke maintained his composure like he had done it before. He persisted in ignoring the pressure warnings and pushing the equipment tests until the rig blew up. To compare the list of survivors with the crew files, Heather logs into the system, but she is unable to locate Coke's name. She informs Easter and Harish of this, and Harish explains that Coke had been using a temporary account the IT guy created when he arrived to access the system. He cleaned all test-related materials before they left the rig. 
Harish points to a strange name on the crew list that wasn't there before as Heather checks the system. There are emails informing the company that the organism has already spread, so Coke must have known all along and was purposefully sent by the company. Rose discovers this may be how the spores keep track of time when Kat checks on her and remarks that the circles Rose is examining resemble a tree. The five major mass extinction events are represented by the gaps between the rings, so the last ring represents the present and is rapidly closing to wipe them out. According to Coke, that is what occurred in his rig. The explosion was brought on by the infected individuals opening the well and blowing it up. Rose surmises that all those containers and the testing are part of the classified project Syrian and that he wants to send a team to the production module, but Magnus is unwilling to take that risk. Finally joining Baz and James, Fulmer discovers that his thoughts are more clear than those of his friends. Baz explains that although he hasn't been exposed to the spores for long enough, they will soon take control. If Fulmer agrees to work within the framework, Baz can assist him in harnessing them. Fulmer starts to work, but it will take some time for the alarm to be turned off. Coke is called for a private meeting by Dunlin, Lars, and Merch because they are tired of Magnus' poor choices and want to hear Coke's suggestions. Coke explains that by entering the mud pit and connecting the carbon dioxide to the ventilation system, they can stop Bez by using the carbon dioxide from the hidden containers to knock him down. Dunlin becomes suspicious when the trio removes the canisters from the containers because the label indicates that the carbon dioxide has been mixed with something else. They don masks as they carry the canisters into the mud pit and attach them to the ventilation shafts. Bez sends James and Fulmer to investigate what's going on and James arrives first and promptly urinates blood on the group. The guys realize that Coke's original plan was for the carbon dioxide to kill James and the plants rather than giving James a headache. While Lars and Merch flee, Dunlin waits to join them until he is certain James cannot be saved. Baz and Fulmer both pass out as they attempt to turn off the ventilation. After Lars and Merch escape, Kat discovers Coke closing the mud pit's doors in the control room, trapping Dunlin inside. Dunlin also perishes when the oxygen in his mask runs out. Coke defends his actions as acts of survival when Heather and Harish confront him after informing Rose and Magnus about him. Rose enters the ventilation pits after Magnus opens the doors but is unable to do so. She then borrows a mask from Lars to enter the mud pit. Fulmer doesn't awaken when Rose shares the mask, so she manually turns off the ventilation before going to see if he's still asleep. But when she unintentionally touches the plants, the spores react and reawaken Fulmer. Together, they climb out of the pit as Bez awakens and the final ring closes underwater.